Okay, this is Beyond Eyes, uh, released today on Steam, uh, simultaneously for uh, Linux, Mac and Windows. It's uh, an exploration based game. Uh, you are controlling uh, this young blind girl. Uh, the prologue to the game uh, deals with the story of how she became blind. Uh, and in chapter one, uh, she met a cat, Nanny, and uh, you know came to love the cat. The cat, being a cat, only visited intermittently, and eventually she decided maybe he was lost, and she should go out of a back garden and look for Nanny. And uh, this is where the game starts, more or less. I've done uh, the prologue isn't 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 game isn't like this. Um, chapter one is you learning learning the controls essentially, wandering around the back garden, and this is the start of the game proper. So the concept is clearly uh, the, the, you know the player character is blind so you only get filled in uh, things that are close to you or things that make a loud noise or well I guess loud isn't the thing the whole sort of soundscape of the game is therefore quite important <coughs> and one of the things you realise when you do a video of a game that is a uh, very quiet is that your computer fan in the middle of summer in the bottom floor flat in a room that's probably about 25 or 26 degrees your computer fan makes a lot of noise uh, so I recorded this video once and uh, basically uh, the ambient sound of the video was getting drowned out by the uh, fan so I'm trying again with a uh, a homemade muffler made of duvet to see if I can uh, mask that somewhat in the game. So, so this is one of the, the cool perceptual bits of the game, and that distant things that are making noise are filled in according to what well, what ray the character thinks the sound makes. But as you approach things, or well, thinks what corresponds to the sound. Mm -hmm you see that things aren't really as you imagined they would be. Now this was a, initially a crowdfunded game. Uh, I played the uh, demo or prototype I guess it would have been at EGX Res in March um, which was actually quite a struggle because I mean Clearly, just to look at this game, it is it is gorgeous. Unless you wander around somewhere like EGX Rest, you uh, it's, it was very eye-catching. So uh, I went all three days to EGX Rest and attempted to uh, have a go on this game. And it wasn't until I think the, the final day, was it a Saturday, the last day. Where I happened to, uh, I happened to go past, and uh, there was a free spot. <coughs> so clearly, you know, let's let's talk about talk about uh, art games and uh, and value and all that. Clearly, it's not an action game. It's it's an exploration game. It's not even that heavy on the story. It's about experiencing the world uh, in this in this unusual fashion and exploring and finding your way through to the next part of the story. 
Okay, it's not going to appeal to everybody. It's probably not even going to appeal to uh, the sort of people who like to go on home. Now, the playtime for the game, I can't, I can't tell you how long it actually is, but the target was for it to be at least three hours long. Currently, the game is um, nine pounds on Steam with a ten percent launch discount. So, you know, look at the game, look at what you're getting, and decide for yourself whether you want it or not. I. I wanted it, I think it's worth it, it will be worth it, I bought it straight away, but I'm pretty sure it will be, you know, bigger discounts, or or it will be in a bundle at some point in the future. What's this? Oh, wow. Well with a frog. See, I've actually played this level twice already, and that's the first time I've seen the well. Sorry, so there you go. It is, I suppose, technically open open world. Uh, what you can see of the world is obviously limited, although where you've been does does fill in as you go past it. Uh, it's quite, you know, it's quite a relaxing game to play with the, with the ambient sound. Uh, the, from from talking to the developer at Rest. And uh, you know, reading reading about the game afterwards, it it seems like this this has been something of a, a labour of love. Uh, Team Seventeen have stepped in at the last minute to uh, do things like internationalisation and and you know all those other things that publishers are good for, and uh, and get the game out the door. Oh. Now, as you saw with the crows, uh, aggressively loud things uh, intimidate Ray, and you can't you can't approach too close. Even though in this case, the dog is safely trapped away behind uh, iron railings. So let's see if there's a way through around here. Now here's the path. Let's carry on around. So the whole sort of colour palette dims when when she becomes uh, intimidated. She crosses, crosses it, folds up her arms there, and uh, oh, are these more crows? Could be. We'll approach with some trepidation. They're not crows. They are, in fact, the chicken. Now we can open the gate. So I'm playing this this uh, level because, for the most part, this level was what the demo constituted at Resd. So uh, it's not giving away too much to people that already played the demo and at the same time gives you a, a good idea of what it's about. Now I did try chasing the chicken out the gate. Oh there we go, I've got one, I've got one. I made a chicken escape. Like I said I tried it before and uh, the chicken ran away very fast from the gate as soon as it got anywhere near it. But now I'm herding chickens. What have we got here? We're herding the chicken over the bridge. Me and my new chicken friend. Ah, and I've unlocked my first achievement, which at least demonstrates that demonstrates that achievements are working on Linux. I was somewhat concerned. There are 10 achievements in the game. I'm not sure if there are trading cards. It's uh... Chicken's off. Like I said, it's not going to appeal to everybody. It's not something even that I would 
I would play every day. It's something, it's a fairly relaxing thing to do. It's, you know, it's beautiful to look at. The sound is, uh, sound is obviously fundamental as well to the whole sort of sensory experience. And what around here? The house. And the whole, the whole sort of, uh, whole sort of discovery, discovery process. This, this is what you're getting out of the game. It's not, it's not going to be a, a lot of mentally challenging puzzles. I think. I mean, there are sort of puzzles. Ooh, what's that? Oh, clock tower. But the puzzles are more sort of a. Uh, spatial is that spatial puzzles and that you've got to find find the path amongst amongst the environment and you know the cat will appear in hallucinogenic fashion it's not made clear whether you know whether the cat really went this way or whether she's just imagining the cat went this way maybe it will become clear later on But uh, here we are. Clock tower. And we can hear a road. So let's head down the hill. Get some ominous music. Obviously there isn't music playing all the time, which is why I found my fan so noticeable. It was uh but you do get these sound effects Ooh. at the sort of crucial scary moments as she uh, she wraps wraps herself up there. Defensive body language and all that. Oh, is this a woodpecker? Well, spoilers, it's not a woodpecker. Now this is of course set up because there was a woodpecker in the opening chapter. So it's, you know, setting expectations. Okay, everything, everything crashes to a halt. Can I move it? Let's go through the road. So that was, you know, it was sort of a puzzle in that you had to discover you had to discover how to cross the road and uh, I think that's basically it right so that's the end of the level or the chapter as it is so I'll wrap up the video there Beyond Eyes released today well yesterday now uh, Linux, Mac and Windows simultaneously check it out on Steam uh, it's a beautiful looking game interesting experience uh, worth checking out I think